So the thing is, a lot of people are asking those questions, and I just want to talk to you today about IRS Form 8606, line-by-line -line instructions. And we're talking here about non-deductible IRAs. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you already ask me. And if you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. And let's go. <laughs> In today's show, I want to talk to you about Form 8606, and I'm giving you line-by-line -line guidelines. It's very important to mention that this show has two sections. First, I'm, I'm going to cover the fundamentals of Form 8606. So it explains to you what the, forms is, what the form is and what it does and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll give you the specific instructions for which you came here. I'll tell you how to file and how to fill the form. The IRS has been audited. They, they have been uh, auditing thousands of taxpayers on Form 8606 lately. So for us, it's very important to explain fundamental concepts about Form 8606. That's why I will be taking time to explain what you need to understand. Having said that, if you just want the line by line instructions, you want to skip the first section. So Form 8606 is a complex topic, but I guarantee you that after watching this show, you will understand everything. And I mean it. So the first section, Fundamentals of Forms 8606. The, the form is used in conjunction with individual retirement account activity. So an individual is responsible for filing 8606 each year. If a non-deductible regular contribution is made to a traditional IRA, if a distribution from a traditional simplified employee pension or savings incentive matching plan for employees of small employers, simple IRA is taken if that individual owns an IRA that contains non-deductible contributions or other basis, a traditional SEP or simple IRA to Roth IRA conversion is completed or a non-qualified distribution is taken from a Roth IRA. So if you have any of those scenarios, you need to file Form 8606. A non-deductible after-tax contribution. Let's talk about non-deductible non IRA contributions. So the, the, the taxability of your retirement account distribution is usually determined by whether the assets are attrib attributable to pre-tax or after-tax contributions. So if your assets are in a qualified plan with your employer, then your plan, your plan administrator or other uh, designated professional is essentially assigned the responsibility of keeping track of your pre-tax versus after-tax asset, right? This is really uh, this is really how things go. For your IRAs, though, the responsibility rests with you as the owner. So we, let's talk about traditional IRA contribution and rollover of after-tax assets from qualified plans. So let's say if a taxpayer does not claim a deduction of their traditional IRA contribution, it's usually either because he or she is not eligible or because he or she simply prefers not to do so. So an individual who is eligible for the uh, deduction may decide not to claim if the, the nature of the uh, future distribution does not, uh, is not good for their tax situation. So regardless of the reason though, the taxpayer must file IRS form 8606 to notify the IRS that the contribution is non-deductible. In other words, it's counted as after-tax asset. Very important. And uh, one of the things that many people uh, don't know about IRAs is that they may roll over tax assets from their qualified plan accounts to a traditional IRA, right? So remember that a Form 8606, according to the IRS, is not used for the year that you make a rollover from a qualified retirement plan to a traditional IRA. And the rollover at that point includes non-taxable accounts. So an, an important element, an important thing you need to think about here when it comes to uh, Form 8606 is the distribution. Distributions are key here. And uh, the thing about distribution is that um, you have to not only, you have to keep some, some tracking. So distributions are prorated. So Form 8606 should be filed each year that a distribution occurs from a traditional SEP or simple IRA if any of these IRAs hold 
after-tax amount because failure to file Form 8606 could result in the individual paying income tax and an early distrib distribution penalty on amounts that should be taxed and penalty-free. And distributions of after-tax assets are also reported in Part 1 of the form. I'll speak about that later on. And remember that distributions are prorated. So if you have after-tax amounts in your traditional IRA, you must, when taking a distribution, determine how much of the distribution is attri attributable to the after-tax amount. So you are, you are deemed to have a cost basis equal to the amount of your after-tax contribution. So this is very important. So the portion here, the portion of the distribution that is non-taxable must be prorated with amounts that are taxable. And remember that IRAs are also aggregated. So to determine the portion of the IRA distribution that is taxable, you must aggregate all your traditional SEP and simple IRA balances. And this requirement really uh, applies even if the after-tax contribution was made to only one IRA. It doesn't matter. And the step-by-step -step instructions on for part one will help the individual compute the taxable portion of the of the distribution. I'll go through with part one in depth. What about traditional IRA? So if an IRA owner, let's say, uh, does not claim a deduction for a regular contribution, the amount contributed is after tax and is considered basis. So therefore, the IRA owner in this case, must file Form 8606 for the year of the contribution to do what? To notify the IRS that the contribution is non-deductible. And Part 1 does a great job here because Part 1 of a Form 8606 keeps track of this IRA basis. And what about traditional IRA distribution? You have to understand that when, whenever an IRA owner or beneficiary, for that matter, has any traditional SEP or simple IRA, that contains um, after-tax asset and he or she takes a distribution from uh, any of his or her IRAs or beneficiary IRAs, you need to file Form 8606, all right? And the after-tax amount is distributed tax-free and penalty-free. And the portion of the distribution that is equal to the pre-tax amount is actually the uh, taxable portion of the IRA distribution. Remember that such distributions are appropriately reported in Part 1 of Form 8606. So what about uh, Roth IRA conversions? Now, remember that someone who converts his or her traditional SEP or simple IRA to a Roth IRA must be able to distinguish between the conversion assets from one end, right? And the amounts representing regular Roth IRA contributions and earnings. And it's kind of, it's very important because this distinction is necessary for determining whether a portion of a Roth IRA distribution is subject to income tax and or penalty. That's the key word here, income tax and or penalty. Remember that a distribution from a traditional SEP or simple IRA that is deposited into a Roth IRA is a conversion contribution. Then you have distributions from Roth IRA. So a distributions from a Roth IRA are reported in part three of form 8606. So if a distribution is a qualified distribution, it is not necessary to complete form 8606. I'll explain that when I start going to the line, line by line instructions to you. If a distribution from a Roth IRA is not qualified, form 8606 must be uh, actually completed to determine whether any portion of the Roth IRA distribution is taxable and also subject to the 10% early distribution penalty. And this is why it's very important to 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 uh, to understand that to understand the concept of recharacterizations. So, an individual who recharacterizes a Roth conversion or or an IRA contri contribution must attach a letter or a statement or yeah, a note to his or her tax return explaining the recharacterizations. So, in this letter, make sure that you would for instance include how much is attributed to the convert to the contribution or conversion and the amount attributed to earnings and or even indicate if there was a loss on the amount. Now, one thing you have to understand is that the ver the verbiage and the phraseology and the terminology it really depends on the individual that is recharacterizing from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA or vice versa. Or whether the individual is re recharacterizing a Roth conversion. So it's all about it's all about um, 
the individual tax situation. So if you want more information about recharacterizations, you want to see instructions for filing form 8606, you go to the IRS website. They have a great way to explain things there. And uh, what about the responsibilities? This is very important. It is an IRS owner's responsibility to maintain accurate records, allowing proper and timely completion of form 8606 at the time he or she files his or her tax return, federal tax return. All right, so Form 8506 is filed at the same time and place a tax return would otherwise have been filed. So again, we're talking about April 15th, deadline, and uh, so on and so forth. It is not an IRA custodian's or trustee's responsibility to inform an IRA owner of the need to file Form 8606 or provide the form to the IRA owners. No. With this said, it's kind of important to mention that and any IRA owner may not be aware he or she must file Form 8606 because, uh, because of this, an IRA custodian trustee may inform the IRA owner of their requirement and how it relates to the IRA as well as recommending the IRA owner see a tax professional for assistance. And it is important to actually uh, do this because there are penalties and other issues if things are not done properly. What are the penalties? So an individual who fails to file form 8606 to report a non-deductible contribution will owe the IRS a $50 penalty, $50. And additionally, the uh, if the non-deductible contribution amount is uh, overstated on the form, a penalty of $100 will apply. In both cases, it's kind of important to understand that this penalty that I just mentioned to you may be waived if the taxpayer can show a reasonable cause for not complying with their requirements. And uh, the, tip, the, uh, the agency, the IRS, typically considers uh, reasonable cause for situations such as death, right? Makes sense things happen. You have serious illness, incapacitation, inability to obtain records, natural disaster, or extreme, other extreme circumstances. So it's always considered on an individual basis based on the specific facts of the situation. What are other uh, co considerations that you need to think about when, when thinking about Form 8606? Now, let's talk about divorce. Now, generally, a transfer of IRA assets from one spouse to another is not taxable to either spouse if the transfer is in accordance with a divorce or legal separation agreement. So if such a transfer results in a change in the ownership of the after-tax amounts, both spouses must file 8606 to show the after-tax amount owned by each. And you gotta have you got you have to attach a letter explaining the change to each spouse, each spouse's tax return. So it's always a great idea to consult with the financial professional folks if you want to split retirement account in a divorce because you want to make sure you're doing the right thing because you want to ensure that no tax or early distribution penalties are assessed on the transfer. What about inherited IRAs? Individuals who um, who inherited IRAs that include after-tax amounts or aka basis must also file Form 8606 to claim the non-taxable portion of the distribution. And it's kind of critical here, folks, to note that the basis I just talked about, the basis amount is the basis amount in uh, an inherited IRA cannot be combined. Very important. Cannot be combined with any basis in the beneficiary's regular non-inherited IRA. In other words, an IRA that the beneficiary established with their own contributions. And um, this rule is one of the, the exceptions to the other rule that requires all traditional IRA balances to be aggregated when calculating the prorated after-tax portion. And uh, last but not the least, folks, we, uh, as I said earlier here, I'm just still in uh, the first section of today's show, just kind of explain to you the fundamentals of a uh, Form 8606. I will talk about the, land, the specific instructions in uh, two or three minutes here. So let me just say here that when it comes to the general overview of Form 8606, there are a few takeaways that you need to understand. The, the 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 form 8606 is is a form that the IRS uses to make sure that the agency sort of monitors IRA IRA activities. So any taxpayer with a cost basis above zero for IRA assets should use form 8606 to prorate to prorate the taxable versus non-taxable distribution amounts. So it is important to retain copies of your supporting documents and Form 8606 because this may prove helpful 
in the future for, uh, let's say, uh, determining how your transactions were treated for tax purposes. Okay. And it's also important to note that the information provided in this show is just a guideline. And, you know, each individual's circumstances may require some modification to the general f filing requirements. So if you are not sure whether you are required to file from 8606, be sure to ask a tax advisor, an EA or a CPA. What are the records that you, that you, you, you need to keep? So to verify the non-taxable part of your distributions, uh, for, of distributions from your IRAs, including Roth IRAs, you want to keep a copy of the following forms and records until all distributions are made. You have page one of forms 1040 or 1040 SR filed for each year you made a non-deductible contribution to a traditional IRA, right? So you have forms 8606 and any supporting documents, attachments, and worksheets for all applicable years. Form 5498 IRA contribution information or similar statements you receive each year showing contributions you made to a traditional IRA or Roth IRA. Forms 5498 or similar statements you receive showing the value of your traditional IRAs for each year you received a distribution. And Forms 1099R you received for each year you received a distribution. And uh, when and where to file. So file you need to file form 20 form um, 8606 with your uh, tax return your 1040 your 1040 sr or 1040 nr by the due date including extensions of your return so if you're not required to file an income tax return but let's say um let's say you are required to file form 8606 you want to sign form 8606 and send it to the IRS at the same time and place you would otherwise file form 1040 1040 sr or 1040 nr one thing that's very important, and I'm going to close here, you want to be sure to include your address on page one of the form and your signature and the date on page two of the form. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. Now we are going to the nitty gritty here. I'm going to give you specific instructions on how to f how to actually uh, file how to fill out and file form 8606 so first and we're showing you on the screen right now you can see the form here non-deductible ira so you have to put your name and social security number so if you file a joint return you want to enter the uh, only the name and, and social of the spouse whose information is being reported on on the form right and then uh, if you have more than one form uh, 8606 required then uh, you have to Check that if both you and your spouse are required to file form 8606, you need to file a separate form 8606 for each of you. All right. If you are required to file form 8606 for IRAs inherited for, from more than one descendant, you need to file a separate form 8606 for the IRA from each descendant. Very important. So part one. Part one we have here the non-deductible contributions to traditional IRAs and distributions from traditional SEP and simple IRAs. So level one, you can see here, level one, you need to fill the level one here in terms of um, if you use the uh, the IRA deduction worksheet in the form 1040, then you, you should be fine here. And you want to enter on line one of form 86, your non-deductible contribution. And you want to include on line one any repayment of a qualified reserve distribution. And one thing for sure is that do not include on line one contribution that you had returned to you with the related earnings or less any loss. Line two is pretty straightforward here also. Line two, basically, you, you have to actually enter your, your basis here. And um, and basically, there's yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Line four, the one thing I want to say about line two here is that if this is the first year you are required to file Form 8606, enter zero. Otherwise, use the total basis chart to find the amount to enter on line two. And line four, if you made contributions to, tradi to traditional IRAs for the year and you have both deductible and non-deductible contribution, you can choose to treat the, the contribution made this year as non-deductible contributions and then as deductible contributions or vice versa. It really depends. And now let's move on to uh, line, uh, line six. So line six here, you need to enter the total value of your traditional SEP and simple areas as of December 
31st, uh, 2020, plus any outstanding rollovers. And this is pretty straightforward. Number seven, if you have any distribution from traditional uh, SEP or simple IRAs, you want to do that. Do not include rollovers. And other than the repayment of qualified disaster distributions, right? This is very important. On line eight here, you have to think about, you have to add the net amount you converted from traditional SEP and simple IRAs to Roth IRAs throughout the year. This is, this is, this is important. And one thing I want to see about line seven, and this is kind of very important, is that qualified disaster distributions be sure to include on line seven all qualified disaster distributions made in 2020 even if they were later repaid you still need to include them line eight you need to as i just said you need to add the amount you converted from traditional step or simple IRAs to a Roth IRA. line 15b so if all the if all your distributions are qualified disaster distributions you want to enter the amount from line 15a on line 15b and if you have uh, dis distributions unrelated to qualified disaster as well as qualified disaster distributions you will need to multiply the amount on line 15a by a fraction right and the numerator for the, of that fraction is a, is your total qualified disaster distributions and the denominator is the amount from f form 8606 line 7 and uh, also I want to mention here that if you if line 15 C if you were under age 59 and a half at the time you received the distributions from your personal from your uh, uh, traditional SEP or simple IRA there generally is an additional 10% tax on the portion of the, of the, the distribution that is included in income and now let's move on to part two Part two, conversions from traditional SEP and simple IRAs to Roth IRAs. So line 16, if you didn't complete line eight, you want to see the instructions for that line. Then enter on line 16, the amount you would have ordered, you would have entered rather on line eight, had you completed it. And let's move it on here. We have line 17. If you did not complete line 11, you want to enter on, on uh, line uh, 17, the amount from line two, or the amount you would have entered on line two if you had completed that line plus any contribution included on line one that you made before the conversion okay moving on we have a uh, line 18 the taxable amount so if you entered if you if your entry on line 18 is zero or less do not include the results on uh, your, your form 1040 1040 sr or 1040 nr line 4b you want to include the full amount of the distribution on form 1040 1040 SR or 1040 NR line 4A next we want to talk about part 3 let's move on to part 3 distributions from Roth IRAs and we have line 19 don't include on line 19 any of the following you have distrib distributions that you rolled over including distribution made uh, this year and rolled over after uh, December 31st recharacterizations distributions that are return of contributions uh, on the return of IRA contributions, distributions that are made on or after age 59 and a half. Those are just a few of them. And uh, I also want to say you also have uh, qualified charitable distributions and distributions made upon the death or due to disability if a contribution was made and uh, distributions that are incident to divorce. And uh, caution though, I just want to make sure I already spoke about qualified disaster, I spoke about qualified disaster distributions is very important to include on line 19 all qualified the disaster distributions made in made this year even if they were later repaid line 20 if you had a qualified first-time home buyer distribution from your Roth IRA and let's say um, you made a contribution including a conversion or a rollover from a qualified retirement plan to a Roth IRA for any year from 1998 through 2015 you want to enter the amount of your qualified expenses on line 20 but do not enter more than 10,000 reduced by the total of all your prior qualified first-time home buyer distributions and uh, I want to talk also now about line 22 this is very important you want to figure out the you want to figure the amount to enter on line 22 as follows so if you did not take a rough IRA distribution before this year okay you 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 want to basically uh, adjust that that amount the amount of the distribution for any recharacterizations if you did take such a distribution before this year you want to see the basis 
in regular Roth IRA contributions worksheet to figure out the amount to enter. You want to increase the amount on line 22 by any amount rolled in from a designated Roth account that is treated as investments in the contract. You want to increase or decrease the amount on line 22 by any basis in regular contributions received or transferred incident to divorce. And uh, the, another thing you need to do is that this is very critical. You need to attach a statement similar to the one explained in the last bullet, in the, in the last point under line seven. You need to increase the amount of line 22 by the amount received as a military gratuity or SGLI payment that was rolled over to your Roth IRA. You need to increase the amount on line 22 by any amount received as qualified settlement income in connection with the excellent Valdez litigation and rolled over to your Roth IRA for those who are involved in that litigation. You want to increase the amount on line 22 by airline payments you received as a result of your employment with an airline that was rolled over to your IRA, to your Roth IRA rather. And uh, however, please do not include the amounts attributable to airline payments that you transferred from a Roth IRA to a traditional IRA because of the of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012. And uh, line 13, we're moving on here, folks. I'm giving you line by line uh, instructions here. Line 23, generally, there is an additional 10% tax. There's 10% tax um, on uh, 2020 distributions from a Roth IRA that are shown on line 23. So the additional tax is figured on Form 5329 Part 1. So if you want more info, go to that form. And line 24, you need to figure out the amount to enter on line 24 as follows. If you have if you have never made a Roth IRA conversion, let's say, or rolled over an amount from a qualified retirement plan to a Roth IRA, so you want to enter zero on line 24. If you took a Roth IRA distribution, let's say, uh, you know, other than an amount rolled over or recharacterized or a return con con contribution before 2020 in excess of your basis in regular Roth IRA contributions, you want to see the basis in Roth IRA conversions and rollovers from qualified retirement plans to Roth IRAs chart to figure out the amount to enter on line 24. And uh, another thing you need to really pay attention here, you need to pay attention to here is that if you did not take such a distribution before 2020, you want to enter on line 24 the total of your conversions to Roth IRAs. And this amount are shown on line 14C of your 1998, 1999, and 2000 forms, 8606, and line 16 of your 2001 through 2020 forms, 8606. Also include on line 24, any amounts rolled over from a qualified retirement plan to a Roth IRA for 2008, all the way to 2020. You also wanna increase or decrease the amount of uh, the amount on line 24 by any basis in conversions to Roth IRAs and amounts rolled over from a qualified retirement plan to a Roth IRA received or transferred incident to divorce. So you also want to attach a statement similar to the one explained in the last bulleted, bulleted item on the line seven. Okay, so this is for line 24 and line 25B. So this is kind of interesting because if all your distributions are qualified disaster distributions, you want to enter the amount from line 25A on line 25B. And if you have dist distributions unrelated to qualified disasters, as well as qualified disaster distributions, you will need to multiply the amount on line 25A by a fraction, it really depends. And the numerator for that fraction is your total qualified disaster distribution and the denominator is the amount from form 8606 line 21 okay all right folks this is this is about it i was just um, i appreciate your attention this was a short conversation and i just wanted to touch on uh, form 8606 line by line instructions and i spoke about non-deductible after-tax IRA contributions distributions roth Roth IRA conversions, distributions from Roth IRAs, recharacterizations, responsibilities, penalties, and other considerations. And then I gave you the specific line-by-line -line instructions on how to fill out and file Form 8606. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay
marvelous. 